I want to talk to Mike about uh, the thousands of people that are dying and reports are coming out that <laughs> oh they also God. ate protein bars. So yeah, what's do you have on? any comments on that? Yeah, what's on? Quest protein bars. <laughs> oh, snaps. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> What do they sell for? A billion? A billion. A billion. And you said it was 20 times EBITDA. their profits. Yeah. That's an apparently, insane... Apparently, Cellucor is going to get like the same deal. Cellucor, no. too? Yeah. We passed on Cellucor. That's, yeah, one, of the first people, that's one of the first people. EBITDA's in the, in the Atkins same going 50, after them, 55 too? 55 million a year. Wow. You know, no, they, not they, not they, they just came out with the uh, gummy bear BCAAs. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's mm. that's popping right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's actually a very smart formula. Give something... What, so, what, give what kind of flavor is that, though? What's that mean? I don't know. Gum, gummy, that's like a texture, isn't it? No, no, no. They're, they're actual they're actually, gummy bears. They're actually gummy bears. Oh, they're actually well. Yeah, they're okay. gummy bears. It sounds like, gummy bear flavor. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know why? This mm, guy tastes the, like gummy bear. The cornbread. Gummy, over. gummy can. I just saw gummy candy flavored pre workout or something. Like, really? Not a flavor, you fucking idiot. <laughs> 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 Wait, you want to make cornbread protein bars? Yeah, that's a flavor. Yeah, maybe. Of course it is. It's a little yeah. more specific. I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Cornbread is a flavor. Yeah, now, right. now we did cereal milk protein, but that was, and people were like, what, what kind of cereal? Oh, that's actually mm. a good point. And it, but it, it does well. Like, is it cinnamon cereal? Yeah, it does. It does what, very what well. Is, it's, it's like cinnamon cereal, though. What's been the worst uh, product idea so far? That you've had, yeah. Uh, like a meal replacement weight gainer. Really? Yeah. Just like a high calorie protein shake, yeah, basically. What What do you think? What, why do you think it was bad? Was it the name? Was it just, just a small no, niche? Yeah, I guess it's just not much demand for it. Not as much as we thought. Even though you'd think there is, if you were just to poke around on the internet, like some of these products do sell well. Um, but you know, we had a similar experience with our vegan protein. So before we launched that, we were asking people. Um, we were always surveying what, do you, what would you like to see next in mm -hmm. terms of products, flavors. And there was a lot of hype around doing a, a vegan protein, so much so that you know we were like, shit, we better order more than we normally would with a new product um, and release it. And it did okay. And that's why you sent there's us no a, good reason. Is that for why it. you sent us a bunch of free vegan protein? Uh, that was yeah. That was the that was <laughs> the, the old leftover. gross stuff that we replaced. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Appreciate it. and then and then it it, it continued to do well. It, it mm -hmm. sells. It, it sold well enough to justify its existence. But that was a. Uh, it was just interesting to see kind of a like flop. how yeah how well can, like, compared to how excited people right. seem to be. But that comes back to again just because people say they're excited for a product or even if you try to survey like would you buy this even, mm. not, even if it's not that blunt but if you're trying to survey for that purpose it doesn't necessarily translate when it comes time for people to actually buy it, what's your is this two gonna, best factors for that still like the texture and taste like that's the for the, the protein yeah 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 i'd say it's it's i mean flavor is always number one with yeah. anything you're drinking is is flavor is going to be number one and then as far as protein goes um texture mixability matters and then and then and then of course the macros as well like mm. that's high up people pay attention to that what about products that you were surprised like you launched and you're like oh shit i did not think that was going to do that well um fish oil fish oh. oil did really well we were like wow uh and i mean it's good and everybody should be getting enough omega-3s and it's hard to do through diet alone so it wasn't right. surprising that it, we thought it was going to sell but it sold out um within two or three weeks. And it, you know, it takes like 10 to 12 weeks to get more stuff made. So we were like, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. I just read some interesting studies on EPA where they, they gave uh, one to one and a half grams of EPA, which is the, one of the fatty acids sure. in, in fish oil. Yeah. They gave those to people with mild uh, depression or anxiety, um, you, you know, kind of mental issues. And it was actually remarkably effective, mm. especially at the mild uh, forms of depression, mm. which is insane. I think it's the anti-inflammatory effects of the, of the fish oil. So I do cod liver oil, which is lower in EPA, but I do it for the vitamin D. Mm. But now I'm doing more of the fish oil. I actually had one of your Triton, Triton. Is that my saying right? Triton. Triton, yeah. What, Going what, back to naming. Yeah. What, what Mistake. Were you, what were you, I feel like, stupid, stupid. Yeah. Those mythological creatures. Were you, yeah, right? were you reading comic books or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The supplements? Well, I, I locked myself into this fucking theme. <laughs> and I, now I'm like, what, what are we going to... And I have to like, we have to change the name of Thrive, for example, because there's a company that has a number of uh, trademarks. They're, they're two word trademarks, so I didn't think it would really matter, but... Um, they're pretty annoying about it. So now, you know, what am I going to name Wolverine, Thrive? Dude. 
Yeah. What am I going to name regenerator? Uh, yeah. Guys in the office are so bad at it. And they're like, ooh, what about Plant Plus? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> idea. Have you thought about surveying your audience and seeing if you do you like a competition that, or something out of it? That would be kind no, of you might Naming get, is tough. Like you, you might coming get up trolls. with the ideas, surveying we with names works great. When uh, I have, all right, here are 10 options or like uh, okay. seven options or whatever. But uh, on a scale of one to five, okay. one being I hate it, five being I love it, that's actually very useful. <laughs> but asking people for ideas usually isn't because Terrible. it's hard. I mean, it's hard to come and, up with good and ideas. And you get trolls. I, I think ideas. it was in the UK where they, they actually had a, a ship and they said, we will let the audience, the, we will let uh, the, the community <laughs> that was in name Scotland. the ship. Was it Scotland? Scotland, yeah, I love the Scottish And it was the this. HMS. Uh, you, you know what they named it? Bodie McBoatface. Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Bo 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 <laughs> what? Yeah. And yeah. it was like yes. a very prestigious boat yes. Yes. in England. <laughs> like, I didn't Bo know Bodie McBoatface. They had to because they, they that, had That the, means that like Reddit that, learned that was about like that or something. It's like it's like when those internet polls just get swarmed by trolls. Troll the you know shit I mean? out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love I like it. That. Wow. What's your what's your best like seller uh, product? What's your best selling product? Pre-workout. It's pulse. your pulse. Yeah, yeah, by far. Yeah, that's the best. Is that the best? Because in the '90s and when I was deep in supplements in the '90s and the early 2000s, that uh, weight gainers were actually pretty big. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember. That's why. I remember myself. They were really big. I, I don't mean, remember which one I, I I would use, but it was like a thousand calories per serving. Yeah, or something. Per, well, there was Gainers Fuel, which yeah. was Twin Lab, Mega Mass 2000, then they went to Mega Mass 4000. Them all they did was make put more, more scoops. sugar. Yeah. Mega Mega oh, Mass. No, it was oh, more scoops. Oh, yeah. Do you know how big or, the scoop was for was Mega like, Mass? It was like a laundry detergent scoop. It, it was like this. It was like four shovel, like a little. Little trowel. You turn yeah. on the you turn on the blender and the blender would break almost because it'd be like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> You'd be like, oh wow, this is this is like plaster of Paris. Choke it concrete. Down. Yeah, <laughs> but that but that was down that market. I don't think is huge at all anymore. Yeah. Then the pre workout market really took off. I think Gaspari was one of the big ones at first. The Super Pump two hundred and fifty kind of mm. took that market. I remember that product. And that so that market's still massive. Huge. Still. Yeah. 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 One it's of the top still, ones. I mean, generally, for I'd say for most sports nutrition companies, they're probably making most of their money off of their pre workouts. Mm. Now, fat, fat loss products as well. Now, one thing I like about you is that you do a very good job of not uh, putting bullshit ingredients in your, even though they're popular, because there's a lot of ingredients that are popular yeah. that a lot of people, there's a lot of hype. And if you wanted to, you could sell it and, and make a lot of money. But you tend to never, you never put stuff like that in your products. Yeah. What are some bullshit pre-workout ingredients that are just common that people probably are wasting your time taking? Niacin. Um, you see value. I, in he that. loves I niacin. Mean, does he? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm biased. I take a gram of niacin a day because I'm weird. <laughs> but it, uh, but there's no there's no like pre-workout. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, skin. you know, actually, you it's might like you sweat. might get slightly better pumps. I mean, you're gonna look like you have a disease <laughs> because. <laughs> but if you All don't care red. about that, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what about arginine? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good example of uh, citrulline is just better, period, yeah. right? Because it turns into arginine in the body, but mm -hmm. uh, arginine is just poorly absorbed. So using it, it's just cheap, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have heard of it. So and they think maybe it's good. So if they're looking at a label, and that's a lot of the a lot of the 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 shenanigans around pre workouts. I guess maybe <laughs> supplementation in general mm -hmm. is it's either ingredients that were once popular. Um, uh, that, so so people recognize them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, vanadyl sulfate. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a marketing thing or an advertising mm. thing, right? Like a big a, one of the big purposes of advertising is just to mm. increase the exposure to something, so people they feel like when they see it, again, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, that 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 sounds familiar. Or when they finally think of, I want something. What what are they thinking of first? What's most familiar yeah. to them? And they also tend to cycle back into the lexicon. Like, remember chromium picolinate? You guys yeah. remember that? Yeah. I yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. That was like a big like, oh, it gets your body to respond to insulin better or whatever. Yeah. Vanadyl sulfate, that does the same. I guarantee there'll be a product coming out at some point that'll both have chromium picolinate yeah. and vanadyl sulfate, and they'll call it something like a you know, carb reshuttling or some matrix. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that. hundred yeah. percent. But yeah, other, other ingredients trying to think what are, what about, I, beet, I don't pay what about too beetroot? much. I like beetroot. Uh, it's got the studies that support or really uh, we, we use betaine, which I prefer because that's really, I mean, you just have to make sure it's a standardized, that's really what you want. Okay. You know what I mean? From, yeah. from the beetroot. So mm -hmm. you can use beetroot root powder, but you're going to have to then, um, you, the, the, the serving size is going to get larger mm -hmm. whereas they're you know i'd rather just get the exact like what what's the molecule really after right um norvaline is kind of popular but 
I don't really see a good use for it. Yeah. What about all the uh, the carb blocker supplements that are out right now? Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Total, total bullshit. bullshit. Right. Right. It, what, it, you, what is it in there that they're carb and fat blockers? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I wrote. Yeah. Some of them are like a podcast on those in particular. Really? I get asked about those. Yeah. And why I don't sell them? And yeah, because they don't work. No, they're complete waste. I mean, there, there are there are products you can take that some studies will show maybe it increases insulin sensitivity a little bit. But is that going to make you lose fat? No. And what are the effects? How strong yeah. are they? Not strong. Yeah. And, then, something and then also, increases- how is it going to affect nutrient absorption? It just, make, just doesn't make sense. No. And then they have binders. So these are supplements that you'll take yeah. that will bind to food and then you'll pass it. And therefore, they'll be like, you get no calories because it makes you poop it out. And it doesn't work either. That's not, yeah. that's not kind of how it works. So yeah. that's, yeah. What about the 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 heavy, heavy stimulants? that allow- when Your pre-workout is just caffeine. Yeah. I I've seen pre workouts that have like every everything's a stimulant stimulant that you can possibly find. Yeah, Yeah. what's the I just came across one recently. I forget the name of the company, but it was probably something like Rage or something like that. I mean, the formulation was so over the top. It was it was it was as if someone who doesn't really know what they're doing just cruised, examined, and picked every possible thing that anyone that that could you you could ever possibly want before a workout and just put them all in there. Mm. And and yeah, it was a ton of stimulants. It was it was let's see, there was caffeine, there was teacrine, there was yohimbine, there was cinephrine. Um, I'm forgetting one or two others. It was coca leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. But uh, I, that's not for me. I don't like the super high stim. I, there probably is a a small market for the super tolerant. Yeah, just very high stim. Mm-hmm. But I would argue but, that it's a it's a, a growing market because you got to think maybe. a lot of these people are because we didn't. I mean, they weren't this crazy when we were younger. And well, we had speed stack. Well, that, that was some shit. Yeah, but it wasn't popular. And I also had to, I worked my way up to having fucking four of those a day, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you worked hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I would think there's a well, lot. What's the what's the I speed stack? Those you know, oh, it, it was a Fedric caffeine a in it. aspirin, yeah. but it was in a bottle. It was American Bodybuilding, and yeah. it sold in gyms. Okay, and you you could literally, I mean, it was 25 milligrams of ephedra alkaloids, two 250 milligrams of caffeine, okay, or 300. 300 milligrams of caffeine, no, 25 two, milligrams. It was, was it 250? Yeah, yeah, ripped fuel was the lighter one. No, then there was extreme. Yeah, extreme that's, had like, the 300. That's right. So 250, 25 of, of ephedra alkaloids, mm-hmm. and then white willow bark was in there, which mm-hmm. is, you know, mm-hmm. like. I used to drive down to LA. We had a connection. At and, this you, and you, you're profile. doing four a day. Four yeah. a day. Yeah. I mean, I worked up to that. So that's my point. My point is that <laughs> there's probably a lot of Pretty kids. sure I got a tumor from it. So. That. I think yeah, no, I got he just, did. I did get yeah. Justin. He did get it to her. Yeah. No, I totally blame Adam for it. So yeah. no, that, was, that, that's that's just another, yeah, another story some of his altogether. best years of production though. That's true. Like, I was going to the company nicotine on top twice of back to back. So I, I, my theory though is that there's a, a lot of kids that are you know 17, 18, 19 getting into the gym, and that's now it's just like hey pre workout. Everybody takes yeah. a pre workout, right. and so if you're starting that early at starting the 250, 300, 400 milligram pre workouts, and you also love Starbucks coffee, yeah. a lot of this stuff didn't exist when we were kids. I didn't have star. There weren't Starbucks in every corner. There wasn't pre workouts going on, so I I can imagine there's a going to be a growing market for these fucking 700 milligram caffeine pre workouts with all the stim in it because everyone's going to be so Everybody's adapted. So adapted, yeah. That, yeah. That's a good point. I, when 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 we were kids, uh, coffee. Old people drank coffee. Nobody yeah. had coffee. Yeah. Now everybody drinks coffee. In fact, I was was that remember that study I pulled up? I think cardiac arrest is spiking among kids. Oh, and it's yeah. probably I I predict I think it's because of the caffeine because they're going and getting you know these big lattes and stuff which energy drinks are more probably more of a thing yeah. oh yeah and, even, and that too right with yeah. with younger kids yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah Red Bulls the rock I mean there's some of the Monster. rock stars now yeah the rock stars are pushing like three hundred monsters new shit what is it rain yeah rain, just like bang that, that's the off brand bang, of bang right, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah what do you think of that what do you yeah, think, what bang? Do you think yeah about that whole yeah what do you think about bang cotton candy well, I mean, he's getting, he's getting <laughs> flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Think about that. Cotton. What, what does that mean? Um, I guess cotton candy actually is cotton candy just one flavor. I can't even remember the last time I had cotton candy. Can you get flavors of cotton it's, candy? There is distinctive a, flavor. Though. There's a traditional cotton candy okay, flavor. Okay. So does that make sense? Which then? is pink. Okay. Yeah. See, gummy bear does not make sense. Yeah. I guess no. cotton candy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. I, you know, they're getting sued for their super creatine. That's the one first thing I was like, super creatine. Okay. That's was, bang, right? On the, yeah. There's like no creatine in there. They're yeah, getting, that's the problem, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why they're getting sued. Yeah. Yeah, and it, so it's supposed to have BCAAs. So I guess the the, the pitch, right, is that it's kind of a uh, a sports nutrition energy drink, right? Because it's mm. super creatine and BCAAs. But I guess they're getting sued because it's. Mm. Not, I guess there's like none of it in. Yeah. yeah how bad? Trace amounts, right, yeah. Mike? How bad is the supplement? I mean, we 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 have our ideas, but how bad is the supplement space for just 
putting garbage out. Yeah, just shenanigans like that. It's the worst. I actually, a part of me is ashamed to, to even be in the industry. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You're the it's, shining light, it's, though, right? Uh, uh, well, yeah. It's just it's just so bad. The industry is so bad, and you know, I, this is this is a it's like a, a first world complaint. But so. Um, I've achieved some level of success in, in, in the space and, but I've, and I've met a number of people and I'll, I'll meet people like you guys who I like, and there are definitely good people in, in the industry, but in the supplement industry in particular, a lot of the people that I've met or just I, they're people who, um, who run these companies that do quite well. I just have no respect for them. I just can't respect them because mm -hmm. of how fraudulent their entire existence is. And so and it's hard for me to, to then be like, well, they're still good people though. Like, yeah, but are they? So yeah, this is how I like, felt about yeah. the marijuana space when I was in that, like that was, and that's kind of what made me leave. There got, it got to a point where I just didn't like uh, my peers. Yeah. I didn't like the people that yeah. I was surrounded with. Cause I get lumped into that. Yeah. You know, totally. I, I got lumped into that category and that's what kind of made me leave D because of that. Do you ever see yourself potentially, Growing Legion to a point and selling off and walking away from it. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see that. Um, it would it would have to be an amount of money, like put a real number to it. It'd have to be probably no less than thirty million dollars. Okay. Um, in more likely north of fifty million dollars, so it'd be amount of money where I'm like, cool, I don't have to care about money anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I wouldn't. It. it <laughs> I think of George Lucas where. Do you remember this this comment he made that he uh, he likened selling Star Wars to Disney to selling his kids to white slavers? Oh no! Oh <laughs> Did God. he say that? Yeah, he yeah. said he had, to, he had to like apologize after. Wow. He's like, I'm fucking George Lucas. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know what I mean? Yeah. He's gangster uh, now. Yeah. Uh, and and so his baby. I'd want to. Yeah, exactly. I, I would. I wouldn't want that to happen. I you wouldn't want it. Someone to bastardize who just gut, it. Yeah, gut the brand. You wouldn't sell. It that'd be the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you re for, read for twenty times? Even uh, yeah. I don't know. Would I? But no, where they would come in and. And just go cool. So uh, step one, let's get that cost of goods. Uh, let's let's cut that in half. Yeah. That, that'd be the first thing to do. I mean, if you're if you're just like a a mercenary kind of businessman, you'd look at my cost of goods rides at like fifty to sixty percent of revenue, which is really stupid from a business perspective. Like business savvy people, I've spoken to whatever they they see that and they're like you're really bad at this. You know that, right? Um, but what they don't understand is when I explain, they go, okay, I get it, is you can't have outstanding margins and outstanding products if you're in the supplement space. You can't. You can choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. And most people in the supplement industry choose outstanding margins and that means shit products. I mean, to put real math to it, it means that on average, you can spend maybe 4 or $5 per product and you cannot make a good anything for four to five dollars. Maybe you could like sell some vitamin C pills or vitamin D <laughs> pills or something, seriously. But yeah. for a pre-workout, um, I mean, my pre-workout costs me and, and we sell a lot too. So I'm well beyond the point of diminishing returns as far as economy of, economy of scale goes. Um, and it costs me about $15 per bottle landed like ready to sell. Mm. My protein cost me close to $20 a bottle. My greens supplement cost me close to $20 a bottle. It's expensive if you want to make good stuff. So you could imagine if I were to take Pulse and you know, if you look at it from a business perspective. Yeah, what are some of the easiest ways that that people cut costs or make these, or, or that well, they pick scams? They, the stuff that matters the most or is the most expensive, they pixie dust or yep. they put them or in. Or just don't even put it in there at all. Right, right. right. Yeah. Say they do. Yeah, and, right. and you know the- And no one checks. Some people do, but you know, you have a lot of people you have, when you look at any market, right, you have uh, varying levels of sophistication. And so you always, every market has unsophisticated consumers. And that's not to say stupid. Mm -hmm. It's more along the lines of ignorant where they just don't know. And we've all been there in any, anything that we've gotten into at all that right. we're, you know, in the beginning, yeah, I was a very unsophisticated supplement consumer myself. And so you can cater, or I would say pander to that level of the market. And that's where you have a, the most bullshit is, is selling to those people. And that's also generally the largest segment of, of any market too. So that's where you, you can just blatantly lie to people and have awful formulations that if anybody knew anything and just looked at the the label, they'd be like, this product is garbage. Mm. Um, but in the, in the beginning, as many people get into, in this case, fitness, uh, they don't, they haven't taken the time to really educate themselves yet. So 
And what it comes down to is then, so let's say you have somebody who's new and to fitness, they never, they, they have 30 pounds to lose. So let's say that's the number in their mind. And uh, they want to take a fat burner because they're like, I don't know, people take fat burners, right? These mm -hmm. things, don't they help you lose uh, fat faster? And so you have me, and this is going to just come into a question that we're going we're, we're gonna to get to, where I'm saying this product will help you burn maybe an extra 150 calories per day. Let me explain why that matters. It's not going to, it's not, this This will help move the needle, but you have to also know what you're doing with your diet and your exercise. And if you do everything right and you take this product, you can lose maybe an extra half a pound of fat per week. And I can sexify that up a little bit and make it a, a little bit better in terms of marketing persuasion. But there's that pitch versus uh, some dickhead who's like, this pill will help you lose 20 pounds in 30 days. Just yeah. take it every day. Yeah, don't you, don't change your diet. Don't do anything yeah. else. Yeah, so, so I understand where people... Oftentimes in the beginning, they're like, uh, I'm, well, you know, what do I have to lose? It's 30 bucks. I'm just going to try the, <clears throat> it sounds too good to be true, but who knows? I don't know anything about this. Well, and well, here's one thing that we've noticed, um, just in, as, as trainers, the, the sophistication of the fitness audience, um, seems to be getting better. Now it's nowhere near where it needs to go. I totally agree. But when I first started training people 20 years ago, um, I had uh, a majority of my time, I had to convince women to lift weights. Mm -hmm. I had to be able to talk to them about why lifting weights was a good idea, why yeah, they're not going to wake up tomorrow looking bulky. like, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Today, the questions are more complex. They're better. Yep. People seem to know more. I see people squatting and deadlifting. Never, pe people never squatted and deadlift in the gyms, I, ever. I I rarely did in the beginning for the first seven years. Right, right, right. I think I squatted on the Smith machine every once in a while. Wow. <laughs> Hadn't deadlifted once in like my first seven years. Wow, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, the right. same way too. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, that was common, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but back then it was, you would- I mean, deadlift, you, when, you, when you buy a bodybuilding magazine, none of them told- No, uh, and you would you would lump that into powerlifting. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. want to be a powerlifter. Yeah, 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 I yeah, identified yeah. more with somebody who was a bodybuilder in a yeah. muscle fitness magazine, and so- And you just no, did what they did. Yeah. So uh, the sophistication for us, in our experience, seems to be going up are you seeing that as well with the supplement consumer are they becoming more sophisticated i would say yes i mean i my brand kind of pre-selects for more sophisticated people in that's that true mo a little bit of a many bias people yeah absolutely many people find legion and just find me via articles podcasts right. books so these are people who are actively educating themselves and so um if looking at it like the demographics skew. I have uh, more probably thirty year olds, thirties year olds than than teenagers. Mm -hmm. I have um, a lot of college educated people who who follow me. And uh, but in general, I do think probably thanks to I think social media has probably contributed to the prol prol proliferation of good information, bad information as well, but good mm -hmm. information. So it is easier where people can just fire up Instagram. And if they're right. following good people, they actually can start learning useful things very easily and quickly. And, um, you know, I'd also like to think that what I've done, I've sold a lot of books. I've in between, I, I had now, now it's just one website, but between my two websites, it's probably over 40 million <clears throat> visits to those websites mm. all, all told since the beginning. And, um, so there are other people like me, like you guys out there, you know, spreading good information. Mm -hmm. So I think in general, yeah, it, uh, the, the, it, you, there are more and more informed people now than it seems like it definitely, yeah, just cause the, it's easier to access when, good information. When we first found you, um, this was a long time ago, um, Doug and I had, we had put together maps anabolic and we found you because we were impressed with your your content and your email marketing. And we mm. said, oh, look at this guy. Mm. And I looked at your information. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, which is rare. Mm. It's very rare. I was fully ready to read and be like, this guy's an idiot. Yeah, yeah. But you actually had decent information, but you were never a trainer. Yeah. How did you get it? How did you learn all this? Did you just dive in deep and try and look at the evidence? Like what brought you to learning about, you know, how to exercise properly? What are the most important exercises? Like all this, all the solid basics that you, you communicate so well. Uh, I mean, it was just a, a self-education project, really. I mean, I started lifting as a teenager and because um, I grew up playing hockey. And then I, when I stopped playing hockey, I wanted to do something to, to remain active. And I was also 17 and I was like, eh, girls like muscles. I'll just get some muscles, I yeah. guess. Because <laughs> hockey, you didn't, that's not, a, you, I wasn't lifting in hockey. Yeah. You just play a lot of hockey. Yeah. Um, Even though you were a virgin until you were married. Uh, 
Uh, I wish that that, oh, that okay. make me even weirder. Uh, okay, but, uh, I, I totally <laughs> guessed right there. <laughs> That's a good guess though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've only had sex with one person. Oh, okay. so but I wasn't. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I mean, we didn't I mean. wait until marriage. So yeah, yeah it's still it's still <laughs> it's still strange. Yeah, but, <laughs> technicalities. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, so so got into got into lifting for that reason and and just did what most guys, even most people did at that, you know, just buy some magazines and gather a couple friends and just start messing around and did that for a while and, and came to then just like it as an activity and as a, you know, just something that became a, a normal just thing that I did. And eventually though, I was like, okay, I'm, if I'm going to put the amount of time that I'm putting into it, I might as well actually educate myself. And I know I could be getting more out of this time and out of this effort. And then that's when I, um, was decided to actually apply myself, I guess, to it. Where did you get your information? And wh In the, what year was this? Um, what year is this? So this was probably seven or eight years ago. Okay. And uh, on the training side of things, well, let's see. So on the diet side of things, the first just bit of random luck, it was good information that, that pointed me in the right direction, was <laughs> I met this bodybuilder powerlifting guy who uh, at the time I, I wasn't savvy about steroid use and how to spot it. And he, he claimed his nat he's natural now. I mean, look back, that's an, a joke, but, but uh, you know, he was, he was the first guy to turn me on to energy balance and macronutrient balance. And so he was, he was prepping for a bodybuilding show at the time, super shredded at this point. He's probably a couple of weeks out, right? It looked ridiculous. And, and I was just like, how you know mm -hmm. and he was like oh how much do you weigh what do you want to do okay eat uh whatever it was 2300 calories a day eat this much protein this many carbs this much fat and um that's it that's all you need to do if you want to get lean because at that time i was maybe 15 percent body fat or something and i'd never really been lower never really cared about my body fat but i was at that point i was looking at him i was like what are you doing mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and so of course initially i was like what do you mean I, what carbs, for example, do? What about sugar? What about uh, complex carbs versus simple carbs? What about when I'm eating carbs? Should I not be eating carbs? Just all the stupid, all the stupid things I had heard over the years. He's like, I don't care about any of that. I don't care. He's like, just, just, just follow those numbers. And I was like, okay, and did it. And then that's when I got pretty lean for the first time. And um, so I thought that was like that was you know a revelation. Anybody Everyone, you remember that of first? Course. We were like, Everyone needs to know this. It's actually this simple. Yeah. And so that then turned me on to uh, wanting to learn a bit more of why did this work, right? So then learning about energy balance, which for that it was it was just a matter of going to the scientific literature. You don't there's you, at this point now there are really just great research reviews. You don't even have to go too deep mm. uh, into the rabbit hole mm -hmm. because people have already done the work for you, basically, between meta-analyses and research reviews that are out there. And, and particularly now, like Eric Helms, um, and I, I don't think he did it alone. I think there were, Alan Aragon might have been it. There were a few people. You can find a great review of uh, bodybuilding nutrition, which mm -hmm. gives you all the basics that you need. There are the practical fundamentals and so that was pretty easy. Nutrition is not very complicated. And you go beyond that and then you learn a bit about of why does, why do food choices matter? Because they do matter. They do matter for the quality of your diet and for your health. The complexities in the, in the psychology mm. behind the nutrition, the, 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 the nuts and bolts is basic. Yes. You know, calories. Is but that was the first life. thing. That's the first thing that I think anybody needs to learn is right. just yes. the nuts and oh, bolts. 100%. Right. Yes. So, but they, it gets totally clouded with a bunch of crazy bullshit. what about on the so, training side yeah that was your yeah. first aha moment right, right. As, yep. a, as a kid getting into fitness yep what would you remember this is a cool this is actually a fun discussion to have because i love sharing this on the show because there's i can recall multiple like aha or yeah, duh yeah, yeah. moments like yeah. why was i not doing this before yeah. so that was the first one nutritionally do you yep. remember like what the next like aha for you was absolutely yeah so the same guy um on, on the training side of things so i saw with his diet advice and so i was asking him what what would you recommend that I do in the gym? And so he turned me on to something called Max OT. And I don't know if you ever came across. Wow, that sounds familiar. Why do I, why do I know that? It's old school. I forget the the name of uh, the guy who it was. It was like a PDF booklet. Okay. Thing, basically, like a PDF ebook that I printed out. And um, the, what, I, what, what worked about it is it emphasized heavier weightlifting. Whereas in the past, you know, I would do a lot of, a lot of work in the range of maybe 50 to 60% of one rep max mm -hmm. and more, more emphasizing the pump. Yeah. The pump and just doing a bunch of reps and no real systematic way of progressing. Um, and, and no, no very heavy weightlifting, like nothing 
in, in the range of 80 to 90, or let's say 85 to maybe 95% of one rep max. And so max OT was just emphasizing about 80 to 85% of one rep max compound exercises. That was the first mm -hmm. where just explaining the importance of increasing whole body strength mm -hmm. and using squat deadlift, using pressing to do that. It's sure you can do accessories, you can do isolation work, but if that's all you're doing, you're just not going to get very yeah, you're far. missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember like uh, when you started doing it, like yeah. the response that your body absolutely? I was, I was, I was amazed. I mean, I actually got strong for the first time, really. And I, I mean, I, I have pictures I've shown many times um, on on my website mostly, but I, I've posted on Instagram as well. That just kind of showed the before and after of, okay, here was me after seven years, I had gained maybe 30 pounds of muscle in seven years. And that's maybe being generous. It might've been closer to 25. It's kind of hard to tell exactly because of body fat levels and so forth. And then here's me a few years later of after I learned how to diet and after I learned how to train and Max OT was the beginning from there, I moved mm. on to Ripito's stuff. I found starting strength. I was going to ask you about how you got connected to him. Was yeah, that yeah, yeah. early on you read his book and then yeah. you had him on the podcast? Yeah I've, had, right? yeah, I've had him on a number of times. Funny dude. I love talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a character. Uh, yeah. He, he gives no fucks. <laughs> um, and... And so, so uh, yeah, I actually was, you know, that was the first time I really, that was the first time I'd ever deadlifted. I remember when I, when I, so, <laughs> yeah, so when I started to squat, um, again, cause previously I wasn't really squatting and then I was squatting a little bit. And then I started as I, as I came, came across Ripito stuff and started to learn better form. So I got up to on, on a free barbell squat, four plates, but for like quarter reps. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, I just didn't know at the time that yeah. that was, that was stupid. <laughs> And, um, and so then I'm learning a proper squat and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I, that makes sense. More range of motion makes it harder. Did you not go lighter? Uh, no. So, so, <laughs> so, so I'm like, man, whatever, we'll see what happens. Right. And, uh, I'm lucky I didn't get hurt. I, so I get down to the bottom and I'm like, this is not, this, <laughs> I'm not coming up. This is not it's coming not the up. Same. And so I bailed it over. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even bail it back because oh, I never had, I never, I, I didn't, I, I didn't never really squat it. I'd squat on a Smith machine before, right? Wow. So I bail it uh, like, <laughs> I, I have to, yeah, I'm lucky. Full of and, half. Yeah, like still here, yeah exactly. And, and I was like, well, that, that was dumb. Uh, and so, so it went from 405 for garbage reps to 185. That's what I had to drop yes. down to for like sets of eight proper. And I had to work my way up. To, work, I bet your legs blew up though. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Over the, over the next couple of years, I, I never got super strong on my squat. I got up to 365 for sets of like two or three. That's pretty good. But I didn't program specifically. I didn't, I wasn't following a strength training pro. I wasn't squatting three it times. It was still hypertrophy week. based type stuff. Yeah, just yeah. because uh, I wanted. I actually don't. I mean, I understand as far as like bodybuilding proportions go. The legs. If I were if I were to want to get into bodybuilding, my legs would have to get bigger just mm -hmm. just proportionally. But I personally don't. Yeah. quite like the look yeah. uh like aesthetically not to mention it's a pain in the ass when your legs are chafing all the time exactly you can't fit in jeans, jeans already yeah you know, are, if they're if once uh they have to be like broken in and until they it was, when i put them on they look like leggings yeah. you know what i mean sometimes <laughs> some jeans i actually like, I can't no i'm not doing that yeah uh and so so anyways that was a big so the importance of compound exercises the important of the importance of lifting heavy weights and then the importance of as i continue to educate myself progressive overload and and, and how important that is and and then how to achieve that, right? So um, the the best way, of course, is getting stronger. You got to make sure you're adding weight to the bar over time. And then secondary to that is making sure that you are increasing your volume. volume. Yeah. Yeah. So you can really appreciate the journey that people go on to try to figure out the right things to do because you had to do that. And it took, and you're a smart dude. It still took you a while. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it took all of us. Yeah. I, I yeah. went down the almost the, almost the same order. And we worked just, in fitness. You yeah. listed right now. Yeah. I remember, I'll never forget, like, putting together the deadlifting. So I always had weak-ass hamstrings. Uh, and probably because there's just not a lot of hamstring movements, especially if you're not deadlifting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, even if you're squatting, squatting is more quads right, than hamstrings. Right, right. So, and I remember getting into deadlifting. And I remember, like, for, I'm, like, 10 years in, and I, I've done the lying leg curl machine probably a thousand fucking times yeah. by this time. Yeah. So I kind of know like where my range is. And I don't think I could get over like 70 to 90 pounds or something on that machine. And then I remember being introduced to deadlifts and then being consistent for like a year, just mm -hmm. deadlifting on, on every, a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And I had just totally stopped doing all the machine work. And I was heavy into barbell lifting at that time. 
And then I came back one day, and it was after about probably a year, and I did the lying leg curls, and I hadn't done them in a year. So in my head, I'm going, oh, I haven't done this in a long time. I'm yeah, probably yeah. going to have to start really light. Holy shit. Like, my weight had doubled wow. and never was – I wasn't even touching that machine mm -hmm. just from the – and that was like – I'm like, I spent fucking 10 years trying to increase yep. the weight on this thing, yep. and just by deadlifting, I doubled my weight. That was like a yeah. aha moment. Yeah. No, Did you have a similar jump in your back and just your pulling strength in Oh, general? dude. Yeah. my So, same thing with seated row. Yep. So, I was – you know, that was when I first started lifting – Seated row was the sta staple first yep. exercise Lap I did. Pull down, seated row. Yes, yep. Go over the seated row, yep. strap up, you know, and try and get to where I could get almost the full stack, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And I worked 10 years of lifting to get to that point where I could almost do the full stack. Yeah. And that was a big fucking deal. Man, after I deadlift, that shit moved so easy. Yep. It blew my fucking- Same, I had the same experience. Yeah. 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 I got that from, I, I learned that, uh, it was this, I think it was the summer after my freshman year in high school, and, and there, were, there were power lifters that- were working out and I was just in awe of these guys and at this point I'd still I'd been lifting weights for a little while I started as a 14 year old kid and um, anyway they taught me how to squat and deadlift mm. and they told me this is what's going to make you big mm. and because they were you know when you're a kid if a big guy tells you this yeah. is what's going to work you're like Pff. he could have told me the horse shit and I would have done it right so I'm like done I'm going to start didn't you no yeah. oh, okay. so I'm like all right I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start <laughs> squatting and deadlifting eater. and um, I gained something like 12 pounds that summer. So that summer from freshman to junior, and I remember I went to school and everybody was like, what the fuck happened to you, dude? Like your legs are, you're, you have a butt now. And it was all because I did those two exercises. Yeah. Before that, I would do leg press and hack squat and yep. all the other leg extensions and just nothing. So that's cool. Any other groundbreaking moments for you? Is, or, is, or was that where you're? Uh, I would say, so we've, we've talked about uh, nutrition, training. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, supplementation, yeah. learning that I don't need to be spending three or four hundred dollars a month on supplements <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that most of them are, are absolutely useless yeah, yeah, yeah. and then in some cases you don't actually know what you're getting yeah. like I remember I love a guy who owns a supplement company just said that by the way <laughs> that's that's on the homepage of the that's like the homepage yeah. pitch but is, I love that I really do I really appreciate that because uh, um, and that's cool that's cool of the, 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 the current space that shows that honesty you can also be successful and not have to bullshit. People. Well, there's still there's still a place for it, right? There's still yeah. a place. I mean, when I was competing, I'm, I'm supplementing and doing things like that because the way I looked at it is I'm I'm addressing all my big rocks. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all the other things. It's like yeah. I want that one ed percent yeah. edge because right. I'm at that level. That makes sense to me. The, the mistake I was making as a young kid was I'm fucking eating three four hundred dollars worth of supplements exactly. every day and but doing I'm, everything else yeah, wrong. But I'm not fucking squatting. I'm yeah. not fucking eating right. Your diet's I'm, terrible. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like that. That's where that's where it makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. No, so I appreciate that you said it. What about sleep? When did you have you figured out about sleep and how important that was? It took me forever, by the way. It took me like till like four years ago. Yeah, I didn't uh, really. Uh, see, I always, always, I never had sleep issues until mm. a couple of years ago is when it started. And now it's on and off. Like sometimes I'll be totally fine. Sometimes it's waking. So that's the thing for me. Uh, I, I don't have any trouble falling asleep, but I'll wake up uh, several times. That's mm. like a bad night for me basically. And it's not terrible because uh, I, I still get a decent amount of, I get enough deep sleep to like I can function and whatever, but I'll notice a bit of a difference. Mm. If I if I wake up once versus four times, it does make a difference. Yeah. And so I didn't really appreciate that until it started because- uh, Not until you lose it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And I used, to, I, so previously, uh, I don't know, maybe let's say five years ago or whatever, I used to- uh, work until right up until I'd go to bed, right? So I'd be like on the computer. I had flux and so I wasn't getting blasted with blue light, but still I'd be on the computer meant working, doing usually writing. So something that requires, it's not, it's not just like mindless answering emails. And so I'd be, I'd be doing that until like 1130 and then get ready for bed, go to bed at 1145, fall asleep in like five minutes, blackout unconscious for, for, you know, six and a half hours, wake up naturally. And that was it every day for five or six years. And I was training hard. Um, I was in, it, there was, there were a few where I was like cutting to get ready for photo shoots. And so I had to get really lean, never impacted my sleep. And so that was just life. I didn't. And then once I started to, once there was no longer the case, I guess it kind of also started after kids, uh, 
now I I I miss it. <laughs> I, I miss my my previous superpower. But but now all that really matters for me now. Uh, what that means for me is I've just prioritized sleep more because like yeah, I was able to do that previously. I was able to go to bed at eleven forty five and have an alarm at six thirty that I'd usually wake up before just naturally. Mm-hmm. And I can't do that now. All right, fine. So I just make sure I'm in bed for eight hours. So I go to bed at ten and my alarm's at six. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I wake up a little bit earlier um, because if I, if I sleep better, I might wake up at 5.30 and that's it. Okay, fine. Uh, but I don't sleep through the night ever. Now I wake up at least once. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I've just- I'm I, similar. But... I do understand the physiological and, mm-hmm. and now I, I have educated myself a bit about sleep because I was trying all the obvious See, I wasn't making any fundamental mistakes. So I was like, okay, what kind of random supplements can I try? What kind of mm-hmm. random- I name a random sleep uh, technique and I've tried it. Yeah. And um, so I, in, in the course of educating myself also came to appreciate, yeah, just how important sleep is. And I've, and since having sleep issues on and off, I've mentioned that more as a fundamental of just looking at the bigger picture. You have your nutrition, you have your training, you have your sleep hygiene, like pay attention. I would have, I would have never thought I would have caught myself wearing dorky ass blue blocker glasses. Yeah, yeah. I never would have thought I would. I mean, I used to make fun of that shit forever. And, yeah. but I also think too, we, we saw something happen, or at least in our generation, like we were here before fucking iPhones and iPads and all those things existed. And I have really bad behaviors of, you know, sun goes down and I'm still mm-hmm. staring at this little tiny screen, answering emails mm-hmm. and on social and stuff like that. And it took me a while to make that connection that, I probably was stimulating myself so much that I was having a hard time getting really mm. deep sleep. Yep. And just that that one behavior alone of okay, I can still I'm still going to do all those things, but at least now I'm going to discipline myself to throw these fuckers on and if I go about my work and I notice a and big Is that better cuz you can you can I mean I, I have an Android phone if, what do they call it? Night, it is night better. shift or it something. It is. So okay. I have both. Like I do I night shift on it still and that, that's better than nothing, right? Yeah. Um, and if you want to go hardcore then you want to get glasses that also that also it. block yep. green light cuz green light will also affect not nearly as strongly as blue light. Mm. All light actually will affect yeah, yeah. your. Yeah. So, Ideally, you would you would just. Well, so here's the game for me. This is the two things. If I do these candle, two things, candle light. Once I, the no sun joke. Goes down. No joke. If I get sunlight during the day, because that sets your yeah. circadian rhythm. So get sunlight. I do that so, too. Yeah, because you tend to lock yourself in your basement and work all day long. Yeah. So if you go outside, Cave, get sun. The, yeah, the word minds. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if you go outside, get sunlight, and then uh, when the sun goes down, and I've done this a couple times, turn off all the lights. We'll go by candlelight, or yeah. we'll use these rock lamps that kind of make this light glow like a fire or whatever i'll sleep good every single time those yeah. two things alone make the biggest difference yeah yeah, yeah. I, go out, I get sun every day yeah yeah good deal yeah what do you guys i, think? I go so so my guy we it's me and a couple guys so we go downstairs into the parking lot next to our office and just take our shirts off and just stand in the sun and, and hang out do so, you really yeah now people a couple of weirdos and they're absolutely <laughs> totally so there are, there are office buildings all around it too oh there's those oh, guys again <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i've even had people come down like so are you guys like a workout group or something? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, nah, we just we just go in the sun. They're like, it's like a couple of, a couple of plants no, that turned into humans. I've been trying to I've been trying to get these <laughs> get guys photo, to gotta get my photosynthesis yeah. in. You know, put a park bench right out here so we could start having our meetings outside because this yeah. thing is a fucking yeah. When we're studying all day, I mean, just going outside, I feel it too. Idea. I can feel the difference now. I did yeah. not uh, when I was younger. Never. I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention to it or whatever, but. You know, we'll, if we'll sit in here for a couple hours sometimes, and I it, it'll be like eleven or noon. I'm getting groggy, mm. and I, I can feel it. As soon as we go outside, sunny, mm. and like ten minutes being the sun, I just feel like my energy levels mm-hmm. come up mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, we have a, a live audience with us today who asked us some questions. These are the 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 VIP. Where's our applause sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just add the soundtrack. We're, we're doing it. We had a dinner with them last night, and then tonight we're doing our our, our live event uh, where we're answering questions. And Mike is going to be one of our awesome guests, so this is going to be kind of cool. But they asked us some Stage questions. Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to start in the area of the, the upcoming opportunities in the health. And, you want to start with the first one? Yeah, I just think that that's a fun discussion. We on the podcast, uh, Mike, we we speculate all the time of like, you know, trends or what yeah. we think is going to happen. And so regardless if you agree with the trend or you would potentially do it, I think it's fun conversation yeah. to talk about what we think might be cool opportunities yeah. financially in the space. Yeah, so the question is uh, upcoming opportunities in health and fitness space. So Mike, you have, do you have any ideas of what you think are like upcoming kind of emerging opportunities this is this is this is bad but i I actually don't 
I don't pay attention too much to trends just because I dislike so many of them and I pass up so many of them, particularly in the supplement space. Mm. Um, and my focus it, in, in most of my time is is on, on just creating good content. And mm -hmm. that's something that, I mean, I would say, um, I think that the health and fitness wave has not even begun to crest. I think we're going to oh, see it getting yeah. more and more popular in general. Yeah, and um, that more and more people, uh, it's nice to see that barbell training is getting more and more popular. And we can probably thank CrossFit a lot for that, actually. Mm -hmm. They're probably one of the first big uh, commercialized activities that, sure. that, that really emphasize barbell training. And um, there are, certainly are positive trends on the nutrition side as well, where even if it's just people becoming more cognizant of what they're eating and caring a little bit more, but uh, the the trends that, that I see in the supplement space is, um, you know, CBD or MCT Bubble oil. Bubblegum BCAs. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, BCAs are just a staple, um, and that just keeps collagen protein, yeah. and so things that I'm just like, this is all just such nonsense, and, um, so I, I can speak personally. So an opportunity that just for, for, for that I'm pursuing myself is next year, I'm going to launch another line of supplements. It's going to be a separate brand. It's going to be like Legion, the same unique selling proposition as Legion. It's just going to be like half the price because I know from, from just post-purchase surveys and having interacted with a lot of people that the number one objection people have to Legion is price. And I understand it's not cheap. Uh, it's not absurdly expensive, but it's definitely premium. And it's because it costs me a lot of money to make this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, and so there's a large segment of the market that Legion will never be able to serve. And those are just the more price sensitive. So how do you make them less expensive? Is it just staple, like staple basic ingredient? Type yeah. Deal? So, so the products aren't going to be as good as Legion's, but one, they're still going to be good products that are worth using it's they're not going to be so low in ingredients or dosages that you'd be better off just not even using them at all and they're going to be much better than any other products at that price point so we'll have a pre-workout for example that will be 20 or 25 dollars is it going to be as good as pulse no but it's still going to be good it's mm -hmm. going to have clinically effective doses they're just going to be the lower end of the range whereas pulse is the higher or highest end of, of the range and that's generally how we've approached legion formulations is if we're going to include ingredient an ingredient we often are going for the mid to high range mm -hmm. of the clinically effective dose except in some cases where we actually feel like it doesn't quite make sense because you're not gonna like there are some ingredients that are expensive that you're not going to get much more out of whether you go from the low to the upper end of the clinically effective dose but you are just going to make your mm -hmm. product more expensive so that's an opportunity that i see so we're gonna you know i'm gonna i'm gonna um I'm going to do that. And so it'll be like Legion is Lexus and this is going to be Toyota kind of kind of approach. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, working out at home seems to be a big thing, right? With uh, Peloton, I think we're going to see more and more just mm -hmm. uh, creative ways for, for people to work out at home. I could see, have you seen, I'm sure you guys- Tonal and all this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be the one. I'm, inter but, I'm um, interested in it. I'm cur I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm curious to see if it if it takes off. I could imagine though, you're in front of a thing and you have you can interface with a trainer even right there. They're going to you know, keep one trying on one. to nail it for sure. And yeah. I think that's too why we partnered up with like a company like PRX. I love the, their approach in terms of trying to make- uh, you know, like real solid equipment fit within, you know, a small space and mm. feel like it's and not- it has to look nice. Intrusive, right? Are, yeah, it's yeah, nice. These things are expensive. So you're going to yeah. have, if someone, I, I mean, Peloton, I think they're- Like $1,500 Their something. bike is like two grand. Yeah, or two grand. Right? Yeah, and insane. then their treadmill, I think, is more. So you could imagine, let's say there's something, uh, it, might, it might be tonal. Is this the, that's where it's like yes. resistance, yes. right? Yeah. So um, do you know how expensive it is? Yeah, it's up there too. Yeah, They're up so, there with like yeah. 1500 2000 But, I, but it's more of. considered, um, it's it's more like tech than it is fitness equipment. So it's, I think yeah. what they're trying to do is, because people don't mind spending thousands of dollars on awesome new tech. But uh, these but are going to be more toys. affluent people probably who are going to be putting it into nicer houses. So that has to look nice. You know, sure. neither, it's not just function. It's <laughs> well, I, I have two, I have two things that I'm like really intrigued by and I think are smart for somebody who's getting it in the space or looking at. And one of those is uh, obviously, and we've talked about the irony is it's uh, the group training or the small group, yep. uh, small square footage, 3000 like camp style. Yes. Like that. And I think there's room actually to do it better. Like right now, it's all the trendy shit, like the Soul Cycles, the Orange Theories, 
Um, I did a uh, I did a talk with Red Dot a couple or this almost a year ago now, and met with the owner over there, and we we discussed like, and he was like, Adam, what do you think about like the Orange Theories and the CrossFits, like? You know, how do I compete with them, or what would what would your suggestion? I said, you know, instead of trying to compete with those those already mega brands that are already driving tons of traffic, why don't you look at the opportunities of the things that they're not addressing mm-hmm. and complement them? Mm-hmm. And I said, an, an example for me is like uh, the, these both uh, Orange Theory uh, CrossFit a little bit better because that's how uh, Kelly Starrett has made his uh, living is off of this is uh, address the, the, all these classes like mobility and mm-hmm. corrective type work. Mm-hmm. And I think creating a a small class like setting like that that's designed to complement somebody who loves these high intensity type circuit based classes is a really good almost like a like a FR. Do you think that, that might be a hard sell though because what's the what's, well, here's, what's well, the benefit the, what's the what's the magic bullet of it you there's know, people re- are going to go a lot of recovery labs that are popping up too because of you know but that is quick fix though. well like, here's here, the jump in this cryo thing that's not really going to well do anything, here's he, do here it. here's it's not going to be popular for somebody who's 25 mm. yeah. you're looking at the baby boomers and the people that are dealing with joint pain and they they've taken it so one of the number one things I saw which is a big market we well, a huge market what a, number one things I saw at Orange Theory when I was there is they they still attract the 45 plus year olds that come in there and do it and they do it every day for you know a few months and then what ends up happening they burn Knee, themselves yeah out. burn themselves out mm-hmm. knees ache shoulder hurting all this stuff because they're not addressing all these issues that they have and if there was a place that they could go to it's same type of core study and what confirms this for me so this weekend so today or tomorrow uh frc comes in here so uh they've got uh, 87 or 90 uh, students in this place, they have they have sold out all of 2020. What's uh, FRC? So it's functional it, range conditioning. It's um yeah, it's it's mo- basically mobility moves, but they add like isometric tension and things uh, to kind of basically alleviate pain, and get the joints to function properly. Again. Okay. So yeah. I've dabbled in this myself. So I used to run boot camps years ago, um, and you know one of the things, and I remember this. I, I built it up. It was a very successful business. I had trainers underneath me, and it was kind of running all over San Jose. Uh, you know, probably the guilt got to me after a while of realizing like, I'm really not helping very many people, you know, like maybe why they're going through my boot camp thing for four months, they lose their weight, then they go back and they do all their same behaviors and shit. And so all I'm really doing is making them sweat for an hour. Right. And most of them are 40 plus years old and I'm watching them as they're moving in my class. And I'm going like, if I had you one-on-one and we were talking like I wouldn't have you be doing ropes and fucking yeah, ladder yeah. drills. Like I'd be doing corrective work with you and teaching good mechanics and so uh, I actually do this now, and it's uh, I hold on Saturdays. Uh, it's a free thing that I do just for these people that I have you know, ran in boot camps years ago, and I run them through this FRC type of format. It's my own. Like I've taken movements that they teach in there that I have found make the the greatest change or help the, that that population: hip stuff, mm-hmm. shoulder stuff, neck stuff, ankle mobility stuff, and. Because it's uh, it, there's movement involved, it's not just stretching like yoga. It's a little bit of intense, so they get a little bit of sweat actually from it. Uh, but most importantly, they they can they feel like they just went through like a, a chiropractor appointment after spending an hour with them. They get up and they're like, "Oh my god, I feel better than I've felt all week long." Because we've we've reconnected to a lot of these dormant muscles that yeah. they haven't been a- addressing or touching. And they feel amazing. So, and nobody's really doing a good job of this right now. Now I know there's certifications that are teaching trainers to learn yeah. how to take these tools and then apply it to their clients. But I think there's an opportunity for a a small square footage place, mm-hmm. three thousand square foot, very similar model as the Orange Theory, the Soul Cycles, only to address people like this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to piggyback off that because I agree with with what Adam's saying and, and I, I want to go into that. But before I do, I'm going to touch on one that I think is obvious. We're in the middle of a big vegan push and the, the, the final macronutrient that has not been demonized, that will be demonized, is protein. And so I think we're going to see a lot of anti-protein information start to come out and supplements that are uh, around that anti-protein push. And the, some of the science they're going to use is going to be, be it'll be like, amino acids up and they'll say oh you don't need to eat protein just take just, these protein. right because protein elevates mTOR yeah, mTOR yeah, the, yeah, and the, basically. yeah yeah the presence of you know cancer can promote uh, it's inflammatory too much protein can cause you know all you know tumor growth and all that stuff which science will show that's true but context matters 100% with yeah. that kind of stuff so i think you're going to see more vegan shit just coming out there mm. i don't agree with it 
but it is an opportunity, and you can already see what's happening right Which now. Which is light and flaky. Impossible Burger and Impossible Meats are selling out all the time, and it's yeah. because they've made hyper palatable, delicious tasting, ultra processed they, food. Well, from what I've tried. read, I have I not tried. tried. I refuse. But it's, I just look at the ingredients list. I'm like, that's not food. So much yeah, worse than me. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Like a yeah. thousand Frank, things. But, it's Frankenstein. But that's an opportunity. Now, to piggyback off of what Adam was saying, I think the next big opportunity for fitness is going to revolve around making your body feel better through correctional type movements and mindfulness. I think mindfulness is going to start making a massive push. And what do you mean by that exactly? Uh, anything mindfulness. So it doesn't matter. It could be meditation. It could be spiritual stuff. It could be classes, but it's going to revolve all around that sphere of- So more holistic. Un yeah. Unplugging your phone, yeah, turning yeah, yeah. things off, being quiet- Focusing on the present, then you maybe know. doing some exercise related stuff. Well, yeah, or with I, exercise. I, I, I feel like I it, feel yeah. like what I'm saying, you could combine that. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. That's yeah. why I'm piggybacking it's on just, it. Yeah. I think it would be incredible. And the reason why I think that's going to be so turning that all into like a proprietary kind of branded method. Yes, if somebody well, could do so that. So I don't yes. know how people are going to do it because there's a right way to do this shit and there's a wrong way to do it. I'm just saying from a marketing perspective, right? If you can yes. call that well, 100 percent marketing in a in a perfect world, you would do some. I mean, we we have the we've laid the foundation for this like so maps prime pro uh, the entire program is we've addressed every major joint in the body and with that comes a little test assessment like that is your joint moving optimally if it's not here's some movements yeah. to help that and i think that that's what the class would kind of look like it would be a that's what i teach right now it's mm -hmm. i take through through all the major joints that i know are the most uh most challenging for people in advanced age and I take them through a couple exercise per joint, and that's all it is. Is I just kind of wake up that area, and yeah. then they go, "Oh it's, my god, they feel amazing." It's going to blow up because people are more aware of ever of the the effects of uh, being distracted, of the effects of not you know focusing on certain things. This new technology comes along with a lot of fear. So whether yeah. or not this technology is good or bad. The fact is it's new, and anytime something new comes onto the scene, it's easy to scare the shit out of people yeah, about it. Yeah. This is what they're going to do. Most people don't like change. No, and general. so that's what's going to happen. There'll be retreats and everything you yes. know, revolving around that yep. where they're going to organize events where nobody has phones. Oh, my God. Yep. Like, Can you imagine? Digital digital wellness is going to be the next Cal, that's big thing. That's uh, Cal Newport's most recent book, uh, mm. Digital Minimalism. Yeah. I haven't read it, but I, yeah. I, I like I mean, I like the deep Ryan, work. Ryan Holiday, there's, just, there's his new yeah. one stillness is Stillness. Is key, yeah, yes. I read it. I mean, everybody's on that right Yeah, and so I I could foresee in fitness facilities opening that are workout, uh, you know, correctional exercise centric, but still kind of workouts. But their marketing is going to be based off of mindfulness and correctional exercise. And then they're going to use that as a way, they're going to sell it as the best way to burn body fat, build muscle. And the studies they're going to use are going to be the ones that show that people who meditate, they tend to eat better. And people at relaxation, your, your hormones are better and all that if, stuff. If, if you fund it, they'll find it. Yeah. No, science works. I see good opportunity yeah, there. That's me being cynical. I, I also think if you're a serial entrepreneur right now that just acquiring real estate in all the social media platforms... I mean, and everything from... Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, YouTube to Instagram to Facebook to Twitter to Spotify to all these incredible platforms off, offer an opportunity for you to provide some sort of value or content on them. That's what I, something I was going to mention. And 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 start, if, that's just amazing. Like yeah. that didn't. That is so rad that we have this. Yeah. That that didn't exist when Completely I was completely decentralized. I mean, yeah. there, no, there are no more gatekeepers. In yeah. A sense. And, now it's 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 up to the market to decide. And you have your own what's litmus good test. And, yeah. yeah, you have your own litmus not? test right there, where it's like, well, I'm not putting on anything that good because there's five people following me and nobody yeah. else wants to pay attention. So change yeah. the game up. So I, I'm just going to keep putting out stuff until. I find the things that are really helping mm -hmm. people. Yep. That's such a, a a powerful tool. And I, I and if you what are what are some tips? It might, this would be something I get asked uh, fairly often, and you guys probably have some good thoughts on it as well. So I'm um, sure there are people out there who know that and who, who know the power of content marketing, but are like, how how do I do it? There's so much content out there. There are so mm -hmm. many blogs. There are so many podcasts. So many YouTube channels. How do I stand out? How do I uh, One of the easiest ways to stand out that I found is to sound uh, counter to the common uh, knowledge. Uh, but obviously, you have to have good information to do so. So if let's say you have to acquire the knowledge first, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean you got to be good. People are just skipping past that step. Yeah, yeah I agree. With that, that's, so. that's a good point. You got to be good. But let's say there's a big push for, uh, okay, like the vegan push, huge vegan push. 
So you, you may actually get some traction by publishing an article that talks about the dangers of eating plants. Or like or, or uh, the positives of the carnivore diet. Yeah, Not, yeah, I mean, yeah. The carnivore diet is it, stupid. But. Yeah, it, but, be, but being accurate, obviously giving good information, but sounding counter, right? Yeah. Like if there was a Contra big, Yeah, contrarian thinking always gets to yeah. Totally, and it gets it shared works. like crazy because yeah. people like that stuff. And I love doing it because 90% of the information that's out in fitness is bullshit anyway. So it's easy to be counter yeah, yeah, to yeah. half the stuff that's yeah. out there. So it's like- BCAAs. I, yeah. I think that- I think <laughs> That we, the fact that we get yeah. the fact that we get real time feedback, likes and comments and shares, and you can see all these things, I actually think it's it's actually relatively easy. What's challenging is people to be we're in this era now because it's so easy and so fast. Everybody expects results so quick. Mm -hmm. This is what I, I tell kids this all the time that are starting a YouTube channel up. And they're like, I'm only, I only have 50 people following me. I've been and doing it for two months. Yeah. Or, or they're like six months in and they're only adding like two people a day. And I'm like, could you imagine if you opened a brick and mortar business and two new customers right. walked in every day? That would be a fucking huge win. It'd be huge. But everybody expects to go to like super famous or super rich overnight. And it just, and I remember the first time I sat down with Taylor, who was somebody who, who works for us and it first turned me on to using my Instagram to try and attract a community and build a business. And he said, Adam, you're going to do this for a minimum of a year or two before you really feel like you get any traction. And I'm like, all right, cool. No big deal. Like I could put my head down and do shit like that. And I had no fucking clue what I was doing. I mean, I was just posting stuff. Yeah. And But I was using that as like a litmus test. Like I put something out. Okay. And people aren't liking it, aren't talking about it. Must not be adding value to them. All right. Let me try something else. Yeah, make yeah. a picture. And then, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Lots and of value. And tidy, then I, tidy whities. Yeah, right. That's where you always start. I would keep sending stuff out until, and I kind of put this for me, what ended up uh, working for me way back when was, People like to see um, what I was currently doing, and I and I before me, I don't know anybody else that was doing this in our space. Like I literally would list. Uh, if you go all the way back to the beginning of my Instagram, you could see I was doing this. I would here's a picture of me first thing in the morning, not fucking good lighting, not flex, not pump. Just this is what I look like. This is how I'm eating. I broke down carbs, fat, protein, the water I was intaking, what program I was running, like, and I would just share that. And it was getting like, people were like, oh man, asking me why. And like, I was getting engagement. I was like, okay, I figured this out. Like, yeah. this is helping people there. Yeah. I'm sharing what I'm doing. They're finding value in it. They're being able to engage and ask questions of me. And that was kind of like the aha, okay, more of this. Mm -hmm. And so I just started plugging away more. And then the traction started slowly happening. And that was really the, the original following that we had to help catapult Mind Pump because when we first started Mind Pump, we didn't have any presence. No, you had something like 20,000, something like that followers, mm -hmm. and that was it. I had no Instagram. Justin had a, a small one, yeah. and that was our first. We had when, a, I, when I published Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, I literally had nothing. I just put a book up on Amazon. And just some dude. And I, and I how think the hell did you small, sell a, I knew how to how did you sell a book? You know Nobody mean? knew who you were. That's a better S question. Self-published. What do you mean? So, no, I mean, how did people find it? How did you get it out there? Amazon. Wow. Literally, I did nothing. I just published it. I think it sold twenty copies the first month. Hey, were you like, already though creating? Cool. Were you people bought my book? I mean, were speaking you, of what you're talking about, yeah. I actually was. I was happy. I didn't know if anybody would buy it. Right. You know what I mean? Well, so this, we also were older, right? So I come from that generation too. I was like, oh, five people are talking to it's me. Five more than zero. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So obviously something is working. So that I just had that. I think I just had that mentality from the beginning and just kept plugging away and plugging away. And even when you talk about when we pivoted from, you know, my little following from Instagram over into a mind pump, you know, the formula for us there too was let's just keep adding value. Let's and, and we had a product to sell. So we had a, we had Maps Anabolic ready to go and sell from uh, the very beginning. And I just I just want to say that that's a smart decision. That's actually a mistake that I see fairly often is that people they wait too long to sell something and you can condition your audience if if you uh, go too long just giving giving away free information when you do bring out something for sale, oftentimes a lot of people will react negatively. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, to them, you're selling out or they're not here to be sold to. The bigger mistake and I see Some people the are, are just like allergic to, yeah. uh, to uh, but the, being being promoted to. And the, you don't want those people, if no, they want right. to leave, leave. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, the bigger, the bigger issue, or I should say the more common one that I've seen is the opposite where they sell something right out the gates. Yeah, I agree. Most people yeah. now- well, I, I don't, I mean- I think if it's a good thing, I mean, again, I started with publishing a book for sale. I didn't yeah. have a website. I didn't have that was literally that's it. Now, mm. I mean, uh, the, yeah, because you, you can look at it like, oh, well, that's that's it's, like, a, it's the, a ton of value, though. You an were extreme a case of a survivorship bias. But my point is, like, although I look at the first edition of the book now and I would like 
I'd be like, this is awful. Yeah. Um, uh, but because the current edition is way better, but it was very good for what it was at the time. There was nothing like it. And so well, that's that was the idea. Authority. I started with just selling something. Yeah. Well, I that, think that's authority right out of the gates, though. And I think, like, from our perspective, too, we had to build that authority. Sure. And by doing that, we had to go through, like, really building their trust and finding out what they wanted to learn. Yep. So we have to give that and go that I, I also think what Sal's talking about, and I agree with him that I see more of this, which is the, the kid or person who's interested in this exact question we're talking about starts their YouTube, mm -hmm. starts their Instagram, gets their first thousand to five thousand people following them, and then right away takes on, you know, know the supplements or takes yep. on some and they're pushing somebody else's product to make 20 percent mm -hmm. commission off of it and i actually think that hurts them more than it, it does well i mean when i was coming up and i had 10 20 000 followers and i was competing i was getting hit up by someone but what i knew i knew long term i was some building something for myself and so i knew like man if i start pushing everybody else's stuff it's gonna be really hard to yep. sell my own thing, whatever yep. that's going to be. And at that time, I actually didn't even know what well, that's that was. A, that's a point of you can exhaust your goodwill, essentially, by yeah. If, yeah. You, if you start, especially if you're selling other people's stuff. There's a different perception between, like, it's very easy to look like a shill if you just start promoting other supplements versus even if it were your own supplement, but it didn't have to be supplement or, or something that is maybe more educational. So if you bring out your own, uh, I mean, in, in your example, like what, what could have probably worked well for you is if you, a lot of people wanted to know, what are you doing? How are you training? What are you eating? Coming out with an educational product that just it explains this is what I do. This is my this. So is that was the first thing that we ever tested to kind of get an idea. Uh, Justin and I wrote a nutrition, the nutrition survival guide. Mm. So that was what that was came mm. with a calculator inside of and it. Was it generally well received? Uh, yeah, I mean, what what yeah, I we just didn't have the audience yet. Yeah, what I learned from that was ten thousand Instagram followers equates to about fucking two hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what I learned. The value from, of Instagram. That's true. That's what yeah. I learned from that. I was like, oh too fuck! True. I was like, okay, yeah. and that's why too, because uh, I thought maybe I was ready. I thought, okay, you know, I've been given value. I've been doing so much for so long. I've got twenty thousand followers. Maybe it's now. Justin and I dropped this book. Let's sell it. And I did, I kept, what do we sell? 25 of them or something? Some, I mean, yeah, some yeah. Small. May, maybe that. And I was like, whoa, like I've, and that it was a good lesson for us. Yeah. It was like, you know, we need to impact and add more value and gain a larger audience before I really try and monetize this thing. Otherwise uh, you're going to be tr constantly trying to push your shit to try and sell. And that's the other thing too, is I really believe that all these platforms, YouTube, Instagram, they're, they're really designed to be more social on them. And I see a lot of companies take their social media and it just it's just like another way of advertising. Yeah. And that's Doesn't all that's all they're doing. And I, I without even knowing their back end and their conversion rates, I can tell you it's not converting very well because most people that are on social media, 90% of people on social media are not on there to shop. They're on there mm -hmm. to connect socially with people and brands and things that they're into. So your social, the social aspect should be a place for you to connect with your, with the community. Now that doesn't mean it can't be a lead generation. So the way mind pump or a value builder, right? Authority builder. What we do is we use those platforms to drive to more free content yeah. where we now have you in our ecosystem. So it's like we connect with you socially 99% of the time, 1% of the time you'll get Sal or Justin or I saying something like, oh, hey, here's a great free guide regarding whatever we are talking about. And then they opt in and now we have them as a lead and now we can nurture them down the road. But on social itself, you know, you'll never see that. You never see us talk about our maps programs or push or sell something like that because I think that's an awful way to use it. And I think you'll end up losing more people mm -hmm. or at least losing the connection that, to the people that are following All you. All right. So let's go with the next question, which was, uh, this one was for you, Mike. Yeah. And it is, uh, you don't sell branched chain amino acids, but why do you sell fat burners? Because I like money. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, because, so I have two fat burners, right? Yeah. So I guess this the, the question basically is saying like, we know it, am BCAAs. Am I a hypocrite? Yeah. yeah, like BCAAs are, are supplementing with branched amino acids. We know. You're friends with Mind Pump. Mind Pump it, talks shit about fat burners. Yeah. And, Why, and, how's this work? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah. And Let's fat put burners, you on the spot. Yeah, I yeah. tend to be put in a category of yep. things that you take that don't do anything, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's true. And they often are. Um, mm. uh, BCAAs, I believe, have like no use. No, whatsoever. unless your protein intake is hella low. And you're but a marathon. Why is that? And you're yeah. a marathon runner. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And why is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, reflect. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? It's, it's, um, it's a good point. And and yeah. So so fat burners. Most fat burners uh, don't don't do anything. Period. Even if you know what you're doing 
with your diet and what, you, what you're doing with your exercise. However, uh, take so we have two different fat burners, and one of them is called Phoenix, and really the the driving ingredients are synephrine, and then there are a couple other compounds that are found in the in the in the same fruit where synephrine comes from that makes it more effective. And then for scolin and in then EGCG, mm -hmm. uh, so from green tea extract. Those are the, those are the main ingredients of what what make Phoenix work. And I stand by. I mean, if anybody, if you've seen the sales page, you've probably looked at the research that that's referenced. And I stand by that research. Uh, Synephrine works, and when you combine it with uh, a couple of the other ingredients that are in Phoenix, it works even better. In in that it just boosts your metabolic rate. Yeah, I was going to say. The, so the thing with most fat burners isn't this. The, the, the real science that supports that they actually help burn fat is the the like the increased rate of like your heart rate over the course of the entire day more calorie burning right now of course if you don't know what you're doing with your diet you can take even phoenix let's say you're taking two servings a day let's say which is okay that's fine um and then you that, that that's a cookie's worth of calories you know what i mean it's like two or three hundred calories a day max and half a soda uh yeah, yeah. so yeah, like so that. you have to know and and even if again if you look at the sales page which i'm actually updating all the sales pages which is nice and it's been a while so i'm like you know tweaking a lot of the copy but i really try to make that clear before someone even buys the product mm -hmm. in that this is supplementation is the least important thing as far yeah. as fat burning goes and and then so the other fat burner is forge and, and the driving molecule there is yohimbine again yohim yohimbine uh, has good evidence that i mean it works it does and so that's why basically because i feel that um the i'm i'm justified in in terms of of the research behind these yeah. these ingredients. Now, if they were to be and I explain people how to use them. If you were, I'm now, not saying just take some pills, you'll be good. Now, if you were to compare the fat burner to the pre workout, would they wouldn't they probably rival each other on the same the same studies and the effect as far as what it would do as far as speeding the metabolism up to burn more fat? No, because um, in the case of my pre workout, it's just caffeine. And as far as caffeine's metabolism boosting effects, I mean, research shows that once you become desensitized to it, you're mostly losing that actually. So, and that's after it's pretty fast. Like you have some caffeine every day within two weeks, you're, you're, you're sensitized yeah. or desensitized. And you don't have a tolerance effect with synephrine and Yohimbi and no, no, actually, ironically with Yohimbi research suggests that it gets more effective over time. They okay. think it might be because it builds up in the body. Yeah. In my, in my experience with fat burners, I think a lot of the reason why people like them, besides the fact that they make you feel good and that's what stimulants do. They just make you feel good. Mm -hmm is the appetite suppressing effects, which stimulants tend to do that. That's and, true. And, and, and I can see some short-term value in that. The issue I always have with fat burners is the same issue that you have. If you're not doing any behavior modifications, um, you're not only wasting your time, but you may be doing yourself harm because you're placing your time and effort and value in something that is- And just wasting money. And wasting money, yeah. absolutely. And then setting yourself up for disappointment Yeah, because you were thinking that th these pills or these powders were going to do yeah. a lot more than they actually yeah. are going to do. Now, some of the most effective over-the-counter fat burners that no longer are legal but were around for a little while that had studies that support them was the classic ECA yeah. stack. ephedrine. You can ephedrine. still get it. You just have to- How do you get it? Uh, with the decongestion. So, oh, you got to get you get you the have to, you have to give them your license because pseudoephedrine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and those actually those studies showed that those worked as well. But here's what I noticed with people when they would take those is they take them, they get the appetite suppressing effects. They were hyper, which probably made them want to work out more. So yeah. they're eating less, or even just made more. them move around more. That that means more calories. Right, right. right. Uh, but then they would have a rebound when they come off because then when they they would come off. They would take stop taking the supplements and they'd feel dead tired. They'd have that period of time where they mm. felt like they had no energy and they'd have that kind of rebound uh, type of effect. Do you see anything like that with Sinifrin, Yohimbi? For, now, Forskolin's an interesting one. Forskolin has got some muscle building and testosterone boosting effects. We talked about this last night. Yeah. Through increasing circulating uh, camp. Yeah. Right? That's, uh, uh, and that gets the body to produce more testosterone. I actually did some, did some research. Forskolin pretty consistently raises testosterone in men. It's actually one of the better testosterone boosters, but you don't talk about it as a testosterone booster. I mention it on the sales page because there is evidence for it, but I'm not really using it as a, a reason to buy it because mm -hmm. the effect size is too small to matter, mm -hmm. uh, especially when people, it's one of the reasons, uh, so take BCA, something I don't sell. I get asked, we get emailed multiple times every week from people asking why we don't sell BCAAs, even from people saying, look, I know BCAAs are useless, but they make my water tasty. Can you please, I'd rather give you, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to give someone my money for BCAs. Yeah. I'd prefer it to be you. 
And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that would literally be the sales pitch. Yeah. That'd be like, this tasty is- Tasty water. It's I, like, yeah, tasty it's like water. crystal light, right? They yeah, yeah. just go that direction. Or, yeah, put some, put some fruit in your water. Yeah. Um, and, and testosterone booster is another product that we don't sell that there's a lot of money in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason being is while- for swollen to be one, diaspartic acid would be another. There are a couple things that ashwagandha can do that too. Can yeah, help. we the, there's the, we got ashwagandha is in in my multivitamin, and mm -hmm. again that's mentioned on the sales page because um, when I'm mentioning benefits, that just here's here's there, there's good research that shows this thing can do these things. Right, but I but you're don't, not marketing it that way. Nope, and I don't I don't really call any attention to it because again the it's not going to make it's not going to it's not going to either. In some cases, it's not going to increase testosterone enough to, to matter at all, or it's not going to increase it enough for long enough to yeah. matter. So or, like, or the studies that show that it raises testosterone were done in men who are uh, you know hypogonadal; they had low testosterone. Sure, now that would, yeah, that would just be misrepresenting research. But even in the case of like diaspartic acid, you don't have to necessarily misrepresent research. You no. can, uh, and, and what what seems to be the 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 weight of the evidence or the consensus right now is that. In, it, it will. It works for a week or two. Yeah, and for, then for a short period of time. Yeah. And I've experienced that myself. And in, in the past, when I've taken oh, yeah. it, where I've noticed it only. What I noticed, I remember noticing, is more sex drive and a little bit better sleep. And yeah. it'd be for like two weeks and then nothing. They actually prescribed it. I believe they prescribed it, or the studies were done in Italy on diaspartic acid and for its effects on increasing seminal volume um, and more sperm. So I, for fertility. That makes you think of a product hey. called Ejaculoid. Yeah, that's a real. That. Yeah. That's, that's a, a real, real product. Thing. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. That's, that's hilarious. a sign of the clown world times. That's, when, <laughs> that's the that's the thing. Top of mind is I need bigger cum loads. Yeah. Oh my Thanks, god, Mike. my life would be yeah. so much better. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Thanks, I feel like, I feel like the hardest part it, uh, for you would have to be the, very similar to what it was like for me with the, the cannabis industry. And the, like, we're, we could sit here all day and talk about like the science that supports all these different things. Uh, to help people or to benefit them. But it was just like when I was in the cannabis clubs and I would be like, you know, and I was learning all about the benefits of the plant and, you know, how, who, what, what, what percentage of people that this could really help and, and do, do good for them. Right. Or really change their life. Mm -hmm. But then when I opened my doors and people came through, if I was being honest with myself, 95% of them just want to get fucking high. Mm. You know, that's what most people were coming in and buying the products. And so I feel like the supplement space would has to have a very similar dichotomy where you're like, you know, I can, I could sit here and make a case with you on all those, uh, all the supplements and how I've used probably all of them at points in my training career where I see value in it. But I also mm. think that I'm a, very small percentage of the general population that are attracted to these things because mm. the probably the majority are still looking for the shortcut yep. and that's why they purchase but what, that's also. what i like about mike is that he you 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 tell you don't lie you tell people exactly how it is and i like that um, and the cool thing is, is you're proving it works that's what i really like the like, business model yes yeah. like you can you can actually build a business and not lie in the supplement space, which is crazy. That's it's like mind, mind Yeah, like, yeah. what? Yeah. I, that's impossible. It's a shocker. Yeah. yeah you know? No, yeah. And it, now there are more companies that are taking a similar approach. Yes. That are saying a lot of the same words, at least. Yep. Because um, you're, you're, you're proving the model. I, I would think that that's something. has something to do with it. I mean, Legion's big enough now where a lot of people have heard about it, and it, it's out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and so that's cool. That was one of the reasons why, actually, when I started it, I was... I mean, you can read about this on the website or you can hear about me talking about it, but it, but it really was a, one of the reasons why is to maybe try to help reform the supplement industry to some degree. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? It's to like set, us with podcasting. To yeah. set it, to set it, mm -hmm. to set at least set a good example, yeah, I guess, for it. people to, oh, yeah. for people but, to follow. Exactly. Well, we, that's how we made our name was by basically calling out bullshit and telling people, yeah, you want to lose 30 pounds? It's going to take you about a year. Yeah. You got to do all these things right. And everyone's yeah. like, you're not going to, how are you going to sell that idea? That sounds crazy. Yeah. 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 It seems to be working. So. Yeah. So, similar with the books. My right. books are teach the fundamentals, you know? All right. So new, uh, next question was, uh, what to do when there are detractors on your fitness journey? So this was asked by one of the uh, individuals we had dinner with last night. And we were talking about how he had lost a lot of weight on his own, had, had, had done this on his own, grew up in a family that really puts food in your face quite a bit. Very similar to my family. I think his family's Portuguese and very similar to Italians. Like you, like my mom's goal in life is to see if she could feed kids more than their own parents. Like that's, she's so proud of that. Like, yeah. oh, you know, oh, give me your kid. I'll show, one of the I'll, guys I'll, who works with me, Spanish, he's from Spain, same thing. It was his mom's like, 
They didn't. Like you know, she grew life. up with. She grew up poor. There That's wasn't why. Food, That's so why it is. It's there. It's just their force thing. fed him essentially, yeah. and he was obese by the time he was like seven. Oh, oh, oh! My my mom will follow. My used to follow us around while we were playing, and she would figure out ways to trick you into eating, so you could just. And she'd be like, "Look, Crazy. he doesn't even know." Yeah, it was like her favorite <laughs> thing. And so I get this. And so what, you know what he, what he talked about is he lost a lot of weight on his own. But then his family would say things like, well, you know, what's wrong with you? You look sick or why aren't you eating? Eat more yeah. food or whatever. And so his question is like, how do you deal with those kinds of people? So I guess I'll start because I'm, I was in a, a similar situation until this day. I weigh right now. I weigh 200 pounds, right? Six foot, 200 pounds. Nobody in their right mind would consider me sickly. Yeah. Well, any medical, uh, I was, I'd be maybe, obese. maybe yeah. sick. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah but BMI <laughs> sick, sucks. bro. But yeah, no, but like <laughs> clockwork, I'll go to a family function like clockwork. One of my family members, usually my grandma will come up to me and be like, Salvatore, what's the matter with you? Uh, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You don't look so good. You need to eat some more food. I'm like, God, and I started getting like, what's going on? Am I, am I really losing weight? Do I look skinny? Out? Yeah. <laughs> so so I get so this. I look like a swimmer. Yeah. yeah. The insecurities yeah. start coming yeah. up. Oh, I remember I got terrible. that yeah, the first time yeah. I got lean yeah. and, and uh, I was I was wearing a long sleeve shirt. So I was like, you have like a really really good like swimmer's body. <laughs> yeah. like, time to get bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. I wasn't going for that. <laughs> yeah, so... What I was telling him to do is to, you know, the thing is, whenever you change, whenever you fundamentally change a part of kind of who you are, it challenges the people around you. So as you see this happen quite a bit with, uh, with couples. So if you look at the statistics of couples that, are, that get, meet and, are, and get married and are both obese, and then one of them lose a lot of weight and the other one doesn't. The almost always divorce. The divorce rate is like astronomical. It's something like three quarters of them. So almost all of them will get a divorce unless both of them go through together. And mainly it's the challenge. And in that case, it would challenge their ego. Is this person more attractive now? Who are they? I don't know them. But even with your family and friends. So let's say you and your friends connect over alcohol and you guys like to go out and drink and party and whatever. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I want to get my shit together. I want to build a business. I want to, you know, whatever. And so you stop doing that kind of stuff. You go out with your friends and be like, nah, I'm cool, man. I don't want to drink. I got to wake up early tomorrow. They don't know how to take it because to them, who is this person? And not only that, but who am I, who am I yeah. now? Take it personally. Take yeah, it personally. If it's a- so when you're, at, when you're raised in a family that is constantly celebrating food and constantly eating and it's this wonderful, great thing and now here you are saying, no, I'm okay. I don't want to eat that. And no, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm cool if I, if I just eat the salad or whatever. To them, it's like, if well, either something's wrong with you or something's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And so that's the question now. So by you, by this person now challenging them by saying, no, I'm not going to eat that way anymore, it's actually causing them to reflect on themselves. Yeah, you're a big mirror walking around. Yeah. Right. They're and like, you know, you did it. them. Yeah, you did it, and they haven't yet, and they have to face that. And right. one of the easiest ways to for them is to not face it and deflect it back on you that right. you have the problem. Right. And I yeah. remember uh, I remember this one incident. I was with my cousins. We were at a big family function and my cousin married this this guy into the family. Great guy. And we're all hanging out and everybody was drinking beer. And he's like, have a beer, man. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm all right. I'll just, you know, I don't want a beer or whatever. He's like, come on. Have and so all night he kept saying that to me. Come on, have a beer. Man, you never have fun. You, all you ever do is think about working out. Man, you need to loosen up. And he kept hammering on me. And finally I got angry and I, I, I grabbed his belly and I shook it real hard for everybody and made a joke about him. And it was a really mean thing to do. And it hurt his feelings, but he stopped, he stopped bothering me. And afterwards I reflected on that. I'm like, I handled that terribly. I, all I did was make him feel like shit. And the reason why I made him feel like shit is I felt bad for saying no. And so what I did from then on was just feel more confident Mm -hmm. in my decisions. And and real confidence is calm. Mm -hmm. False confidence is loud and it's uh, it's contrarian. So the false confidence is like, no, stop making me want to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm trying to stay thin. I don't want to gain weight or whatever. Real confidence is like, no, I'm all right. No, I get. No, it's cool. No, laugh about it. No, I don't. No, it's good. I already ate. I'm cool. No, I'm. Hey, what's going on tomorrow? And just change the subject. The longer you're calm and confident in your in your in your new skin or whatever, and the more they realize that it's oh, it's the same person. You just yeah. have some different behaviors. That's the only way through because they're it. gonna they're gonna keep hammering you. Like this has happened every time I go to my parents' house. There's always something like, oh, you're so high and mighty. You're not gonna eat waffles anymore. Like it's <laughs> a big deal, you know. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. You know, it's fine. But yeah, you just have to keep keep calm and just consistent and like yeah. not make a big deal out of it and be like, I just kind of shake my head, like you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and then and then they just eventually give up. And they're gonna say they call you skinny. Yeah, and that, and now what they do, nah. <laughs> and now what they do is they'll say something. 
something and then they'll leave it and it's not a big deal. And now family members will prepare sometimes a separate thing for me. Like, oh, Sal's not going to eat this. So we'll, we'll make this. And it's not that big. It's not that big of a deal, but you're just going to have to sit in it, kind of be cool and confident and just, it's not a big deal. And then change the subject and then let them do their thing. And that what's happening, what you're, what you're witnessing is them processing mm -hmm. this different version of you. And that can be very difficult. It's all them. Yeah. I remember even like when Katrina and I first met and boy, man, her family just, they had a hard time with me. I was right in the heart of like this whole mission to compete and like getting, carrying my Tupperware and like, and they're, you know, big Hispanic, <laughs> big Hispanic family. Full everything. neurosis. Oh, so dude. Peak neurosis. I was. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I knew that, you know, and you know, they're a big Hispanic family. Everything is centered around drinking and food, everything. And they celebrate everything. And so every week you're, we're at their house and you know, I refuse to drink. I refuse to eat the food they're having. I'm eating my own. And boy, for probably the first two years of they that. They probably saw it as really rude. They did. Yeah, yeah her, He doesn't her, like our food. <laughs> her, her brothers didn't like me. They thought I was antisocial. I didn't want to have fun. And I didn't want to get to know them. Because for them, yeah. that's the way they all connected. They all yeah. threw back the drinks yeah. and ate and laughed and messed around. And I'm over there eating out of my Tupperware and passing on all the drinks. And I was just at a family reunion. And one of my, one of my cousins is like, hey, are you going to come have a beer with me? It's like, I don't drink. And he was actually like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. He like shorted like, it in his brain for a minute. You're really not going to come have a beer with me? I was like, I'll come. I'm just not going to, uh, I'll drink waters. I'm, I'll, I'll, you want to do something? And uh, he didn't show up. It's, it's, it's literally, <laughs> everyone went to this it's place. It's literally their he, own oh. shit. It's their shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The reaction that you get is that that's, yeah. that's all of them. And that's it, their, that's, it, they're struggling with all their own insecurities and their own shit that they're dealing with and you you not partaking or making a different choice really makes them have to think about yep. that. You and, know? And, and speaking and of confidence, I think you have to be confident to to not give in to that pressure yes. and just, just the pressure to conform and be acceptable. Mm -hmm. right. Well, the irony of it is too, is that the harder they'll push, the more you, you want to kind of sit in your, in your space and be like, I'm not budging. Eventually, here's what ends up happening. Eventually, if you're cool about it, you're calm about it. It may take some time. It may actually take like a year for people to just kind of realize like, oh, okay, he's like, it's not that big of a deal, whatever. Yeah. Then eventually, after about everybody calms down a little bit, then you find yourself relaxing around it and you're like, yeah, I'll have a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. And you kind of enjoy yourself and then it's not that big of a deal. But at first, boy, I mean, imagine if, you, if any of your close friends who you, let's imagine, think of your friends right now and think of their characteristics. Like, oh, I got a friend, you know, John, he likes to ride his bike all the time or something like that. And then imagine if all of a sudden he's like, no, I, hate, I don't like bikes. You know, you're going to be thinking, who's this guy? Like, <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if I know you Great anymore. Analogy. And that's exactly what happens. Who's this guy who likes skateboards now? You like bikes? This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. This is, we can't be friends anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> alternate universe. All, right, so, all, all I liked about you is you rode a boat. I rode a bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I liked, man. That's what you had going now for you. Now there's nothing. <laughs> no bike. Right. You're dead to I me. Mean, yeah. now, the, now the next Jump question, off a cliff. Are you, someone's going to have to school me on this because I'm not familiar with Senna T. Okay. So the question is about Senna. And is, is it recommended to take it only for a week? And what can be done to fix oneself after excessive uh, So school use? me on this. What is so, it? So Senna is a natural laxative. Um, it, it softens stool, but it also stimulates the muscles of the, uh, of the, of the gut to uh, expel, um, you know, to make you poop or whatever. I'm assuming it's, it's in a lot of these poop teas. Thank you. The, the 100%. Fit tea. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's in a lot of those. Yeah. And it legit does work. If you drink something with Senna, it irritates the gut lining a little bit, gets things to gets move. Gets things moving, yeah. Gets things moving, and will make it to the bathroom. Now, here's the problem with using uh, Senna. It's the same problem that, that there is with uh, all laxatives, is that the body adapts. And what you'll what'll end up happening is your body will, when you go off of these things, it won't work anymore. You can get, uh, there are people who become addicted physiologically to laxatives. So because they it's use like them, either be super constipated like then you, or, or just drink the tea every day. Then you have to use yeah. it. You absolutely have to use it. So the way to back out of that is to do a couple different things. One is to k drink a lot of water and eat foods that help with your digestion. Okay. So for a lot of people, what this looks like is very well cooked vegetables. Okay, so raw vegetables tend to not do this as well, but well-cooked vegetables tend to do this. You want to cook them till they're mushy. 
So you want to eat things that are leafy, green, spinach, rapini. Easily processed. Asparagus. Yeah. Cook it really, really well. So Plenty it's of soluble fiber. Yes. And increase your fiber, increase your water intake. But and soluble in particular, a lot of people think of just insoluble fiber as, mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. but if you eat plenty of vegetables, you'll get plenty of insoluble or soluble fiber. Yes. As well. Yes. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to slowly reduce your use of senna. If you go cold turkey, you'll probably have the constipation of a lifetime. So what I would do, and, and the, the way I recommend people go off caffeine is I tell them to reduce it by a quarter use every week. So you might want to try something like that. So let's say you use, let's say you're 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 having, you know, two two cups of this every single uh, every single day. Then I would lower it down to one and a half cups for about a week, and then the next week one cup, and then a half cup, and then so on. And if it gets really bad, stay wherever you're at for a little while until you feel like you can lower it. So again. most common thing that I would see with clients that struggled with this would be uh, the overconsumption of protein and the underconsumption of good dietary fiber. That's the fiber. other one, yeah. You know, greens and berries. And that would be like the recipe for me. I'd, I'd make sure they have, I'd bump them up significantly higher in their fiber uh, through greens and berries. I'd have them eat like, you know, a cup or two cups of blueberries, raspberries, like a little bowl of that. And then a, a bunch of spinach, rapini, mm. add that into their diet. Then also a look at their protein intake. Are they doing, you know, one gram per potty, pound of body weight or more? And then I would significantly reduce that. And that tended... You, you hit the nail on the head. In fact, when we talked last night, he was telling me that his protein intake was actually quite high. Yeah. So it would be smart to lower protein intake as well because that can really... Yeah, that hydration helps. matters too. Big time. Right. Just making sure yeah. that you're not yeah. dehydrated. Yeah, those three uh, right there, I'd say. drinking gallons of water a day, obviously. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Digestion's a good one because when it's off, it fucks with everything, but it's always, almost always a symptom of other things, just like sleep. Like sleep fucks everything up, but the reason why you don't get good sleep, it's often the symptom of something else. So uh, I would uh, increase those vegetable intake, well-cooked vegetables, drink a lot of water, uh, reduce your protein intake, and then slowly reduce your consumption of senna because uh, it is, it has been shown to have uh, people d build a dependency on it. And yeah, I, I know some of my clients that actually have taken this tea because when they travel, a lot of times they tend to find themselves yeah. constipated. That's a, like a common theme. So this was one of those. But obviously, if you could get access to like you know vegetables and have that combo uh, available to you, it's going to be ideal. Yeah, ca caffeine is also uh, here's the other thing too. I don't reduce caffeine while doing this. Wait to reduce your caffeine till later because reducing caffeine for some people also results yeah. in constipation. So. Or add one to two servings of Legion Greens every yeah. day. Yeah, there you go. I'm not what's gonna, the, what's come it? on, man. We didn't pay. <laughs> we didn't get paid for that. <laughs> That's bullshit. This guy's a genius. I was waiting for the commercial plug for himself right there. That was, yeah, yeah. that was like a layup right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, you could add some Legion it's, Greens to your diet every day. It's we'll funny because it. we have yeah. zero affiliation with uh, with Legion. We just like you guys so much. I yeah. keep trying to. To get in, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hard to get over this wall, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're all prudes. We're all cock yeah, couple, such a couple, big, couple, couple prudes. Yeah, yeah, such all right. a big. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next one. All right, so here's a here's the last question. It was transitioning from active work to more sedentary. So in this particular case, she's a dog walker. That's her job. Averages, I believe, around twenty thousand steps a day. Um, and also was following Maps uh, Aesthetic. Maps Aesthetic is one of our highest volume workout programs. There's three. Mm big workouts a week and then the workouts in between are shorter but you're working out basically five or six days a week mm -hmm. and Full so it's body. how do i transition from i'm not going to be walking dogs as much so my steps are going to go down and my workouts i'm going to lower my volume now have any have you guys experienced like anything like that dramatic or more dramatic than that in your career i i did like with personally my, yourself not myself but with clients mm -hmm. who like so blue for, workers. for me i'll never forget when I left uh, 24 hour fitness as a personal trainer or fitness manager, or whatever, on the workout floor, training clients or lifting weights and re racking weights for 10 hours a day, yeah. six days a week, yeah. uh, and then training myself on top of yeah. that. Uh, easily, I was stepping 20 to 30,000 steps and lifting and doing things active, right? Every single day to completely stopping that. And then sitting at a marijuana dispensary with no nobody coming through the doors for the first six months to a year, holy shit, was that a like a total swing? I went from the guy who could struggle to get enough calories in to maintain his size to really quickly. Uh, it didn't take much for me to overconsume, yep. and it took me a while to figure out what my new caloric maintenance was because I was I was the guy who mm -hmm. was I was trying to get five thousand calories a day, and I had a hard time with that. 
every day because I was just burning so much to being super sedentary to where I could eat almost half the food and that was enough for me to maintain. So, you know, my first suggestion and I and I recommend this over any sort of tools that are out there is to just when that time comes when you transition to uh, a, a lot less movement is you need to just almost like you're starting from square one again. It's like it's time to track again. And you could probably already just guesstimate that you're probably going to reduce yeah. a solid 500 to 1,000 potential calories. That's depending what I would on where, say. Start with a good new estimation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start with a good, a good estimation of reducing, you know, X amount of calories and then be consistent with that for about two weeks of, of, of tracking. And the goal, obviously, in those two weeks is to not see – weight gain or weight loss, and that should give you a good idea of the new caloric maintenance where you should be at. So Yeah, that's a, that's that would 100% would be my advice. I'd say you're going to have to lower your calories, um, but you can also try to focus uh, on building muscle. So you can also make the focus on oh, I think strength. The I think the combination of all of it would be ideal, yeah, right? Yeah, I, like, would, I would focus on building muscle because that's going to help offset um, some of the, the, you know, but it's the, not going to be much. I mean, it's not going to be much, but it'll help, and, and it also changes meta, your mental. It's a better long term metabolically strategy. active. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, well, you know, going it's interesting. from twenty thousand steps a day to five thousand, and it's if that's what it's going to be or whatever, and and less workout volume. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You're you talking can, about you cannot. Yeah, you're talking about begin five, to replace that five hundred to a thousand calorie yeah. difference. Yeah, for sure. and what you might want to even some people do it by eliminating a meal, so they say, okay, I'm not going to eat breakfast anymore. I recommend um, reducing just reducing the size of each of your meals, uh, but and getting used to that being your new normal. It's going to take a little bit of a time to kind of get used to it. But as far as a metabolic addict uh, uh, activity of muscle. Here's what's interesting. This is actually a good discussion. I know studies show that it's not that much. Like yeah. gain a few pounds of muscle, it's not that much. I think it's like much. less than 10 calories a pound yeah. or something. But like you know what, today. though? Here's the funny thing. In experience, uh, I've taken people and reverse dieted them um, and had them build four or five pounds of muscle, which isn't that much, and had seen their calories increase by 800 and not gain any body fat. There's other mechanisms something that are happening. Else is happening. There is something I mean, else that's happening. You could say maybe some of that is due to nutrient partitioning, but even I would say there are probably other factors. There is. There is lifestyle factors. Well, and like there's also activity and, and, and you know what I mean. And if you're switching and you're and you're putting a lot of energy and building muscle, you've probably naturally increased intensity in your workouts, naturally yeah. progressively overloading. Yep. Yep. So there yeah, are other good. factors. But, you, but generally speaking, I agree with Sal. It's that, weird. I've I've had clients who went from like insane amounts of activity and volume and actually had to reduce it because it was just too much for them. So I had them cut it way down and we do this slowly. I, I typically don't go cold turkey. That's another piece of advice. It'd be great if you didn't do cold turkey where you went from 20,000 steps to 5,000 steps. I would get a step tracker and once you stop dog walking, I would try to at least get maybe 5,000 less. So 15,000 Are you doing steps. cardio on top of that too or no cardio right now? No. So that's, a, I mean, there, here's where LIS is incredible. Uh, so, you know, just low intensity, steady state cardio has a lot of value for someone who's making this transition. So maybe when you go from the 20,000 steps from dog walking so much to all of a sudden dropping, you know, potentially down to five instead of dropping all the way down to five, you know, spend a half hour to an hour every day walking on the treadmill and multitasking, either reading mm -hmm. emails or listening to your favorite podcast, Mind Pump. Um, or or go can. outside and walk if you can, it'll be better. Well, yeah. No, that'd be, no dogs. Yeah, yeah. That would, <laughs> you're right. That would be better. So, I mean, I, I would see a lot of value in doing that. It doesn't need to be in high, intense at all. It's just walking, mm -hmm. you know, just replace it inside the gym but or I, I, but I tell you, But I tell you what, there is something interesting that happens sometimes. Like I've, I've had clients who, you know, over the course of, six months lower their activity significantly because they had to because they were just doing way too much focus on resistance training slowly reverse diet them and see their metabolisms completely change and on paper it doesn't make sense and i've seen that happen Many times you see that, especially with competitors, of changing people. macronutrients. There's like going from a low protein to a high protein. Uh, you also, what happens? What happens? We all know what happens too. When you start to feel better about your body, you build muscle. You walk around with your chest puffed out more. You're you're active. You're more lively. So there's a lot of factors. But, okay, so I'll bring up a study that was interesting. Did you see the study that was done on the? I can't remember the name of the tribe. They were they're a, a modern hunter gatherer tribe. But through some pretty sophisticated testing, they were able to, to test their their how many calories they were burning every single day. Um, so, and what they thought was, okay, here we are with this modern hunter gatherer tribe. We hypothesize that they're burning a shit ton more calories than the average person. These people are active all day long. They're taking oh, I did hear know, about this forty thousand steps a day or more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just totally active. You know what they found? 
they weren't burning that many more calories than the average person. Now, it makes perfect sense if you think about it, evolutionarily speaking, why would your body allow you to burn shit tons of calories by being super active? If you we, can't eat them back, like right. you'll just die eventually. Right, and so. we, we evolved in environments where food was very scarce. Right. So there are other mechanisms at work that I don't think we fully understand. And the human metabolism is so complex. We act like we know how it works. We, we really, the, the, the only thing more complex than that look, is Look at brain. Doug's, Doug oh. looks up. A, 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 you looks a up, pop-up right he there. He gets a legion hitting him. Can't get away from this motherfucker. Come on, yeah. click on it. <laughs> click on it, Doug. Yeah, throw, throw his numbers off. Click on it. Don't buy anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's the study right there. You're following so, us. There is something interesting that has happened. So this should give you some hope because a study like this shows that although you're you're really active right now, if you reverse out of it and kind of do it the right way, you'll probably still have to eat less, but it may not be- Is it the Hansa tribe? What is that tribe, uh, Hadza, Doug? Hadza. Hadza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Hadza tribe. It might not be as dramatic as you think, where you might think like, oh my God, I'm going to be eating 500 calories a day. No, I don't think it'll work that way if you do it the right way. So I agree. Yeah. Anyway, good time, Mike. Yeah. Always yeah. a blast having you around, man. Yeah, Looking for forward to back. tonight. Tonight will be fun. Yeah. Man. I'm always like, yeah. what's he going to say? Are we going to get in trouble? <laughs> <I told you. laughs> I'm a master of walking. Let, let your hair down a little bit tonight, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good time.